Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. So first up today, the CEO of PG&E actually said that Tesla's virtual power plant in California is the world's largest distributed battery at the moment. She added, not hard to imagine a near future with many more batteries plus EVs participating. Our energy future in California is clean and bright. Tesla has made some changes to the Tesla Semi webpage. Perhaps one of the biggest is that you can no longer place a reservation where the button used to be to reserve one for $20,000. Now it's just get updates. It seems pretty apparent to me the reason they did this is because the pre-order list is already very long. Just have a look at this list going over the Tesla Semi pre-orders, at least the ones that we know of publicly. Now granted, these were all over the last few years and they may not all ultimately go through to actual orders. Either way though, just the orders you see on the screen, this is over 350 semis. We've heard initial production rates tossed around of five semis per week. So doing the math, 350 from this list divided by five per week, that's 70 weeks worth of semi production that Tesla has already that we know of. So if we assume that production rate, Tesla already has a backlog for the semi well over one year. That's not the only change Tesla made. As you can see, now it says three independent motors. This was down from four previously. We also get a new interior render of the new center steering wheel and the dual screen setup. We also get some updated charging stats. Tesla says with less than two kilowatt hours per mile of energy, consumption, remember that figure, the semi can travel up to 500 miles on a single charge, recovering up to 70% of range in 30 minutes using Tesla's semi chargers, which presumably will be the same as mega chargers. Just real quick on that point, remember we have a group of companies globally working on a mega charging standard called the megawatt charging system. This new standard is supposed to be capable of delivering a maximum of 3.75 megawatts. However, it looks like the first pilot pilot projects will be coming in 2023 and then a commercial release in 2024. It does however say charging power from one megawatt up to three megawatts. And Tesla shared this really nice photo saying operators can see an estimated fuel savings of up to $200,000 within their first three years of ownership. However, in the real world, this is going to vary significantly based on many factors. So that seems like a super rough ballpark. In a video last week, I did some math showing why I'm optimistic that the Tesla Semi battery pack may be in the neighborhood of 715 kilowatt hours. A lot of people out there are just assuming it's going to be one megawatt hour or a thousand kilowatt hours, but I personally think it will be less than this. If you missed it, this one will be linked in the card and in the description. Sticking with my assumptions, Tesla did reiterate under two kilowatt hours per mile consumption. So this would mean less than a 1000 kilowatt hour pack. Now, if Tesla is saying it can recover up to 70% of range in 30 minutes, that works out to 350 miles of charge in that 30 minutes. So 70% of a 715 kilowatt hour pack size would be 500 kilowatt hours in that 30 minutes. To find the rate, if it's in 30 minutes, remember you would just double it. So this works out to an average rate of one megawatt. Now, I don't think it's worth our time to try to figure all of this out in detail right now because these numbers might change once the actual semi is released for sale. The biggest takeaway for me is Tesla already has plenty of orders for the semi. Just to give you some context, if we take that around 350 orders that we know of on the screen, times an average pack size of 715 kilowatt hours, it could definitely be higher than this, that's over 250,000 kilowatt hours of batteries. For more context, if you divide that by an average Model Y pack size of say 70 kilowatt hours, that's 3,500 Model Ys or 350 semis. And no, it's not one or the other for Tesla because remember most Tesla Model Ys in the United States have 2170s at this time, just trying to give you a frame of reference. And finally, the drag coefficient that was listed at 0.36 is now no longer on the site. Elon gave us an update on FSD 10.69. There are many major code changes, so this will be an extra cautious rollout, releasing on August 20th to 1,000 Tesla owners then 10.69.1 next week to accommodate feedback and release to around 10,000 customers, then 10.69.2 the week after, and then finally releasing to the rest of the FSD beta. 
According to Drive Tesla Canada, it looks like Giga Berlin is aiming for a third shift, which would take production at the plant to 24 hours a day by this December. Right now, Giga Berlin's making around 1,200 to 1,500 Model Ys per week, and the goal by the end of this year was to be around 5,000 per week. So of course, the main limiting factor for Tesla doing this, in addition to all of the new production techniques, is hiring the employees to make this possible. The Indonesian president, Joko Widodo, was interviewed by Bloomberg, and he's still pushing for Tesla to not only manufacture batteries in Indonesia, but also to make cars there as well. And you have a $5 billion contract to supply nickel ore, but you wanted to have a Tesla car factory. It now looks as if you might get a, or you hope to get a, a Tesla battery facility, and I wondered if you could give us any news on that. Is that any closer? What we want is the electric cars, not the battery. For Tesla, we want to build electric cars in Indonesia, from Ford electric cars, Hyundai electric cars, from Japan, Toyota, Suzuki. And we want a huge ecosystem of electric cars. It's still in discussion. Let's see later the final result. Everything needs time. I don't want to be quick with no result. It needs an intense communication and the result will show. We want added value to exist in Indonesia so that there is income for the state, taxes, opening job opportunities in Indonesia. And most importantly, we can really enjoy the added value. You've talked about putting a tax on nickel products, you know, the next stage up. Is that going to happen this year? An export tax on nickel products? It is possible to impose it this year. So, not a ton of new insight, but remember, Elon has been invited to the G20 summit that's in Indonesia in the middle of November, so we may get an official announcement sometime closer to that time, and for now, talks are still ongoing. But don't forget about this massive deal that's apparently already been agreed to between Tesla and Indonesia for battery materials. So, will Tesla take it one step further and actually manufacture cars in Indonesia? If you had to guess, what would you say? An update on Giga Texas from Joe T. He spotted a fourth Giga Press, but this is the 6100 ton variant, aka not for the Cybertruck. This is for the Model Y. However, it's now in testing and Giga Texas looking to expand production. It looks like Tesla has added 48 supercharger stations in China in July. So, of course, this is more than one station per day. Nitsa is now asking Tesla for more information on the interior cabin camera that's right above the rear view mirror. This nine page letter from Nitsa to Tesla gives Tesla until October 12th to answer these questions, mainly regarding the role that the cabin camera plays in the enforcement of driver engagement and attentiveness. Specifically, Nitsa is looking for evidence that justifies Tesla giving the driver any time having their hands off the wheel before it actually issues an audible alert. This all stems from the initial probe of Nitsa investigating some of these auto pilot crashes. It had been upgraded to an engineering analysis, basically where they require more data from the automaker. But honestly, so far, Tesla has been pretty compliant in giving Nitsa what it's needed. So hopefully this results in a big nothing burger, but not out of the woods yet, clearly. Sandy and Corey gave their first impressions of the over $100,000 BMW iX. Corey said the headlights are the most phenomenal lights he has ever seen. Sandy said he loved how the BMW logo flipped up to serve as the place where you pour the windshield wiper fluid. And he said, if you're not going to have a frunk, which this car does not, this is a good move, just having the hood latch down all the time. Both Sandy and Corey said the fit and finish was excellent. However, there is very minimal cargo space in this vehicle. They also really enjoyed having the controls for the user interface right where your hand actually rests, right in front of the armrest. Overall, first impressions for both of them was pretty positive for the BMW iX. Car and Driver has awarded its 2022 EV of the year, and the winner is the Hyundai Ioniq 5. The four criteria for this award were one, mission fulfillment, two, advances in technology in its segment, three, the enjoyability of the driving experience, and four, overall value. We've already talked about the Ionic 5 in prior videos and how it's gotten really good reviews from most people. And honestly, I think it's good for overall EV adoption that some other automakers outside of Tesla get some recognition for making good EVs. Whether they really deserve it or not, you can debate that for days. And based on the criteria for this specific award from Car and Driver, I do really think this vehicle is worthy. 
Unfortunately though, you won't find the Hyundai Ioniq 5 on this list of vehicles that are right now eligible for the EV tax credit because it's currently made in South Korea. Ford came up with this new concept car. I just wanted to show you the pictures, but my whole thing is why are companies still taking any amount of time to create these new concept designs? This isn't something that you see Tesla spending any time, money, or engineering talent on. And as you've probably heard before, success leaves clues. So if I was any of these legacy automakers, I would be nixing all of these concept vehicles. GM has decided to reinstate a quarterly dividend and to increase the plans for share buybacks. They're not doing a share buyback, they're just increasing the allotment and authorizing this to happen in the future with no timeline yet given for when that may actually happen. The quarterly dividend is going to be 9 cents per share or a 76% reduction from the 38 cents per share from before when the dividend was cut due to coronavirus. As mentioned, GM has also increased the authorized amount for future share buybacks up to 5 billion from 3.3 previously. In my opinion, the only real argument you can make for GM to spend any amount of money on a share buyback would be to take advantage of depressed share prices. As you can see, GM down about 41% over the last few months. However, I would argue that this billions of dollars should be allotted to the EV transition rather than artificially propping up the stock price and trying to signal strength to the market. However, apparently the market likes this news from GM as it's up about 2% on a very red day. From Automotive News, GM and LG are considering a site in Indiana for a fourth United States cell manufacturing plant. This could be in New Carlisle, Indiana, and production at Altium's first U.S. battery plant in Warren, Ohio is set to begin later this month. This latest battery plant is expected to be another $2 billion investment, but no timeline on when production should begin here. Some Rivian customers are now feeling like they're getting the old bait and switch as Rivian has discontinued the Explore package, which was the entry level model of the R1T. Rivian said that demand for the Explore model was lower than anticipated, so removing this option is going to give them the ability to streamline its supply chain and ultimately deliver more vehicles faster. The vast majority of customers have apparently ordered the next trim level up, the Adventure configuration, and on Rivian's Q2 call, we heard RJ talk about most of the demand was for the more expensive models. Customers now have until September 1st to either upgrade to a more expensive option or to cancel their order altogether. The unfortunate reality is this type of thing happens to automakers all the time. Of course, you can't know what production and demand will look like until you actually get production and demand up and running. So it's definitely unfortunate for the customers, but this type of thing happens to most automakers. This seems to be coming a new Friday ritual as now Sawyer says a new record has been set. Yes, he counted again. Over 10,000 Teslas at the Luchao port in Shanghai. So all signs point to Giga Shanghai ramping incredibly well and setting us up for a very exciting quarter three and quarter four. That'll do it for today. Please like the video if you did. Hope you guys have an awesome and a safe weekend and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.